This overlooked $70 lab test is one of the most important predictors of inflammatory based disease, but why doesn't anybody run this lab? If you have MTHFR, elevated homocysteine, vegan, or are just not that into seafood, definitely stick around because I'm gonna share with you the importance of this test that a lot of even naturopaths are overlooking. I'm gonna walk you through my exact labs, tell you how to interpret it and read your own, give you a little bit of background on it, and then walk you through what exactly I'm gonna do in order to improve my levels within six weeks. Hi, I'm David and I help people reclaim their lives from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe for more videos on natural health, mindset rewiring, and personal development. So in today's video, uh, it's near and dear to my heart, so this one um, is directly related to the reason that I got into natural health. So in 2014, I had mercury poisoning. I had ele all sorts of ele elevated heavy metals, but specifically mercury. So what did I do? I went through an unnecessarily aggressive chelation protocol. So they tried to shake those heavy metals out of me, had to take all sorts of stuff. And a lot of times it made my symptoms of brain fog even worse because those uh, metals re-entered my bloodstream. So after I went through that, it was about a six month protocol. And um, what ended up happening is I needed to radically change my supplementation and lifestyle. So um, because of that pretty traumatic um, experience with chelation and just not wanting to go through that again. I personally abstained from seafood um, as a result of that because I didn't really feel confident um, that I could, you know, that my body was able to detoxify those heavy metals and I would have to just check my uh, heavy metals on a very regular basis if I would have chosen to eat seafood. So I, I chose not to and it's been about seven years since I've stopped eating fish and um, I've been also using algae or vegan omega-3s since then. So over the years, I've been to quite a few naturopaths and health coaches, and none of them have recommended me to test my omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, even though they knew I have been omitting seafood from my diet for about seven years. Very odd, right? And it wasn't until I pursued my own health coach certification that I realized the far-reaching implications of omega-3s, and I wanted to go ahead and find this out for myself. I know that I haven't been supplementing with um, or eating a plant-based omega-3s as much as I should, and I just know that the vegan omega-3 conversion rate is not that great. So I need to find out uh, what exactly my level was and what I could do about it. So why do omega-3s matter? So our diet has changed quite a bit since prehistoric times. Like right now, um, the average Western diet has omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 18 to 1, which is six times what it should be, which is ideally the ratio is something like 3 to 1. And there's just way more omega-6s in our diet than there were before. Also, if you look at this uh, PubMed article as well as uh, a lot of other studies, you'll see that omega-3s have a lot of anti-inflammatory um, properties and they also help with autoimmune issues and just with your immune response as a whole. So your omega-3s are gonna be an important indicator of whether or not you get a lot of inflammatory-based illnesses like heart disease, um, you, your risk of, of cardiac arrest or sudden, sudden cardiac arrest, uh, type, two type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and many other things. Um, we've also changed the way that we raise our food. So um, grass-fed or kind of pastured um, animals have 50% more omega-3s. So even something like grass-fed beef is almost a completely different food from grain-fed beef. So just artificially, even if our diets have theoretically remained the same, um, there's just been a much, there's a much higher incidence or rate of omega-6s in our diet, which is inevitably causing much more inflammation. So we just live in a different world where we can't just assume that if we're eating the right foods that our omega-6 to omega-3 ratios are gonna be balanced because of the way that we grow our foods and also what's been inserted into our foods and then not to mention the external stressors that we have on ourselves. And lastly, more recently with COVID-19, there's been a lot of talk about cytokine storms. This is something I mentioned in my COVID brain fog video. And here there's a, a study um, found in PubMed that talks about the importance of omega-3s and how it modulates or decreases the incidence of the cytokine storm or these pro-inflammatory pro cytokines that contribute to a lot of the issues caused by COVID-19. And it shows that 
um, those who increase their uh, level of omega-3s or increase their intake of omega-3s are less likely to suffer from these cytokines. Lastly, even if you supplement with omega-3s, the conversion rate down to EPA, which is at the bottom of the chain reaction, is often extremely low. And one of the markers in the test is actually the ratio of arachidonic acid, which is the most inflammatory of the omega-6 fatty acids, to EPA. All right, let's check out my Omega Quant lab results. So um, I'm gonna be showing you my test result from Omega Quant, which um, I felt I had a really good experience with them. Um, they send it directly to your home and you just um, get the results back within a week. You can find a link in the description below um, just to have that sent to you. So they're gonna measure a couple things. One is the um, Omega-3 index, which is kind of like their just overall score. Um, and it's gonna measure um, the levels of any and all Omega-3s in the blood cell membrane. Okay, the next one is gonna be your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So this is gonna be um, not so much of like, is your diet bad, but like, are you not consuming enough omega-3s? You may not be overloading on, on omega-6s, or you may be consuming plenty of omega-3s, but you may just have too many omega-6s in your diet. And this can be very sneaky, even for healthy people, because there may be some you know, vegetable oils and some of the processed foods you eat and things like that. The arachidonic acid EPA ratio, um, arachidonic acid is the most inflammatory of the omega-6s and then that'll be found in red meat and I have been mostly taking algae omega-3s on and off really for the past seven years since I stopped eating seafood and so not surprisingly my omega-3 index is here at a 4%. Um, ideally um, after my protocol, my six week protocol, um, I want to get it to about eight, ideally nine percent. That's kind of ambitious goal here. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, my personal diet, I don't, um, you know, I don't have too much red meat. I would say, but it does uh, persist. It is in my diet, uh, usually from grass-fed sources, um, and otherwise, it's. I would say I have a, about a fifty to sixty percent plant-based diet, and um, do have some um, animal protein. Uh, I would say on a pretty regular basis. So that's. That's me. Um, I, I say that just so you can, to give you an idea of what you might expect. Um, and I do take, you know, powdered chia seeds, walnuts, and all the plant-based sources of omega threes. Okay. The omega six to omega three ratio. So mine is woo terrible, right? So ten point three to one. Um, the average uh, American diet is going to be in that eighteen to one uh, ratio. And then ideally, kind of like our ancestors are in the blue zones today, um, they're really going to be in the three to five one, depending on where you live and, you know, how available fresh fish are or just kind of high omega-3 fish. So definitely have a lot of work to do there. And the next steps for me on that one would just be to uh, lower, you know, the instances of the arachidonic acid or kind of any of those highly inflammatory omega-6s and then I'm going to obviously increase my omega-3s. I'm going to be sharing exactly what I'm going to do um, at the end of the video um, but I am going to switch away from vegan omega-3s as an experiment to see what happens. The AA to EPA ratio. So vegan algae um, omega-3s are just really poor in terms of EPA. Like they're they just don't have that much of it. Like just to give you an idea I mean the EUE one that I take um, only has 125 milligrams and then, you know, 100 milligrams of DHA. So not great. Um, and so the one that I'm hopefully going to be taking soon is going to be more in the probably like 1.2 grams of EPA. Um, so you definitely want to have uh, an omega-3 supplement that is higher in EPA than DHA. So this level, not surprisingly, is quite bad. Um, and it just shows the, you know, the presence of the inflammatory omega-6s in my diet in particular so definitely going to be fixing that um on the more optimistic um, side for some good news my trans fat index is quite good um, that's not surprising i guess because i don't really eat a lot of processed food and i avoid um, a lot of kind of the hydrogenated oils i don't eat a lot of fast food or anything like that so um, this is this is definitely good news so i'm good on that front I hope going through that test was useful. So as someone with an MTHFR gene mutation, the C677T homozygous, what am I gonna do next? So in my case, what I am gonna do is um, try out a fish oil 
um, because it's clear that the vegan omega-3s just were not cutting it. I mean, the labs just don't lie, right? And I'm gonna be trying out um, a company with high EPA in relation to DHA, because I think that's, uh, we also saw that that was very low, um, or rather my, you know, the number was high, but my EPA was low on my labs. So I'm gonna be going with a company called Equilife. Um, they have a very high um, EPA, I believe it's uh, 1.2 uh, grams uh, per serving. And so I'm gonna be trying that out. And they also have a liquid form that I've linked to in the description below, so you can check that out. Um, I might consider Nordic Naturals, but I'm leaning towards Equilife. Additionally, it's clear that I do need to lower my intake of omega-6s. So I am going to be replacing those um, perhaps animal protein-based meals, especially the red meat, with plant-based meals. So I'm gonna reduce that quite a bit um, since eating fish for me is not an option. Everyone is, is different, they're free to do whatever they want. But in my case, I'm going to be supplementing with the omega-3s, kind of including more plant-based omega-3s into my diet and then dialing down the omega-6s. I'm gonna do this for six weeks. I'm gonna be taking three grams of omega-3 fatty acids and then I'm gonna test again and then I'm gonna shoot an update video to share with you if this worked. Once again, um, I am not here to give medical advice. Um, however, um, this dosage of like three grams and then a maintenance dose of two grams um, is one that um, may work for many people as far as um, balancing your body systems. But once again, this is just for me. I'm here to take you on my healing journey as I optimize my health and just sharing with you what works and what doesn't work. Well, I hope you got value out of this video. And if so, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos on natural medicine, mindset rewiring, and personal development. My mission here at Moksha Life is to make sure that no one is suffering from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem the way that I did. If you have any questions, anything that I didn't get to uh, as I was doing the lab readout or anything else that you want me to cover related to omega-3s or anything else you see on my channel, please leave those questions in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you soon and have a beautiful day.